Matthew 28, verses 16 through 20. We read in verse 16, Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Now, let's stop there for a moment and realize where we are here in Matthew chapter 28. Throughout the Gospel of Matthew, whenever we find Jesus on a mountain... You can expect a theologically rich moment. It seems that Matthew, as he records this gospel narrative, he, he likes this, the imagery to be representative of something. He wants us to realize that the mountain is a place where Jesus wants to teach us a deep theological lesson. Whether it was the Sermon on the Mount in chapter 5 or the Transfiguration in chapter 17, Jesus has these mountain moments with his disciples. And here we find ourselves on the mountain again with Jesus. So it's not surprising that Jesus told his disciples that after his resurrection, he would meet them in Galilee on the mountain. And here he would give his disciples some final words of encouragement and instruction. And so here we find ourselves on the mountain with Jesus. But there's something different about this moment on the mountain than all the other times. This time we are witnessing someone who died and rose from the dead. We are beholding the risen Christ his mission has been completed. Death has been defeated. The grave has been conquered. But the world is still broken. Jesus had promised that he would one day return to make things right, to establish peace, to bring justice, to make all things new. But until that day, I imagine that the disciples were wondering, where are you, Jesus? What are you doing in the world today? Is your work in the world on pause until you come again? Why didn't you just make everything right the first time? Are we living in the intermission? Where is Jesus today? And Jesus takes this moment here with his disciples on the mountain to invite his disciples to invite you and me to be part of the work that Jesus is still doing in the world today. Many have referred to this passage as the Great Commission. It's the passage that this church has based its mission statement upon. It's the calling of the church. It's the mission of Jesus. It's the answer to the question, where is Jesus today? And so Jesus says to them in verse 18, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations. Jesus is giving his disciples a mission. He's giving you and I. He is giving the church a mission. And as we ask this question together, why church? We have to take seriously the words of Jesus here in this passage. The first thing we realize about, uh, about Jesus' mission for his people, his vision for how the church would continue his work in the world, is that the mission of the church is based on the authority of Jesus, not the ability of his people. Notice how Jesus began that in verse 18. He says, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples. You've probably heard this before. But whenever we see therefore in the Bible, it's important for us to ask, 
What is it there for? And, and so as we see therefore, we, we understand that this is an important word that connects what follows with what came before. And so Jesus is giving us a command. He's giving us a mission. He's inviting us to be part of something bigger than ourselves, a work that is continuing in this world. But he bases that not on the ability of his followers, but on the authority of God. I have often looked at this passage, verses 18 through 20, just all by itself. It's a, it's a, it's a great passage, a, a, a pep talk for the church. Go and make disciples of all nations. But this morning I, I chose to include verses 16 and 17. And sometimes I, I'll admit I've wondered what the purpose of verse 17 was. It says, when they saw him, the risen Christ, when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Was it that some of the, some of the people, they, they worshipped Jesus, they got it, this is the resurrected Christ, this is worthy of worship, and some were, yeah, I, I, is, is this really the resurrected Christ? I mean, I mean, he was dead three, he was dead a few days ago. I mean, I, I, I saw his body go into the grave. I, or, or was it that, that they worshipped him, but, but some of them, even in the midst of their worship, they had doubts? Is, it, is, this, is this really happening? Did Jesus really rise from the dead? Is he, are, are, are we really still following this, this, this man? Is this really who we expected him to be? And I tend to think that Matthew included verse 17 before this grand commission for the church for us to realize that the mission of the church is based on the authority of Jesus and not the perfection of our faith, not the perfection of our worship, not the ability of ourselves to explain the good news of Jesus very well or for us to talk very well or for us to, to, to be very good Christians. It's not based upon our ability, but it's based on the authority of Jesus. Jesus says, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples. So the mission of the church is grounded in the authority of Jesus. But not only that, but the mission of the church is not so much focused on going and making disciples as it is making disciples as we are going. The force of Matthew's, uh, as Jesus records, as Matthew records Jesus' command here, the, the verbs that are used here, the main verb in this sentence, in verse 19, is make disciples. The word go here is, a, is like a secondary verb. It's, it's, like, it's like we're saying, you know what? Go to the store and get eggs. The force there is, we need eggs. Go get eggs. It's not so much I'm telling you to go, but as it is, get eggs. I don't care if you get them from Becky or if you get them from uh, Stop and Shop. I, I, I just want eggs. And that's the force of Jesus' statement here. He says... Go and make disciples. The mission of the church is not so much going to make disciples as it is making disciples as we are going. And Jesus is inviting us here to be part of his work in the world. And so often, I think it's easy for us as Christians to view the mission of the church as something we go to do. But Jesus is inviting us to be part of a mission that is as we are going. As you go throughout your week, and the 
mundane of Monday morning, uh, as, you, as you run back and forth from work or school or in your home, as you are going, this is what I am giving the mission to do. Make disciples. So what, what is a disciple? It, it, it's a follower of Jesus. It, it's simply someone who, who, who is willing to follow Jesus, to, to commit their life, to, to walk with him, to obey his commands. Someone who's, who, whose chief desire in life is to bring glory to Jesus. And that's what, that's what the mission of the church is. That is what God's mission for you and me is. It's God's mission is that not so much that we go somewhere to make disciples, but he's inviting us as you go through your life, the people you meet, the, the family you've been given, the place where you work, the place you go to school, the, the, the people you run into, as you go, make disciples. Jesus is calling followers. Our first week in the series, we looked at a few chapters back in, in, in Matthew, and we, we saw that the, the identity of Jesus is the foundation of the church. But not only that, but the identity of the church is followers and not fans. And so Jesus is inviting us to go into the world as we are going to make disciples, to invite people, you know what, say, I follow Jesus. He, he is what my life is about because he gave his life for mine. And we have the opportunity to invite others to be followers of Jesus, not merely fans. Our mission as the church is not to make people like Jesus. It's to invite people to fall in love with Jesus. To follow him with their whole heart. A few weeks ago, Mary was in the hospital, and I was taking a taxi through the city. I was running across town to get some dinner for us, and I was in the taxi ride, and I started talking with the driver. And uh, I, we were talking about this and that, and he asked me what I did. I said, well, I'm a pastor. And he said, really? Okay, what, what, what kind of church? And we got talking, and he goes, I, I just gave my life to the Lord a few weeks ago. I said, really? That's amazing. What happened? Did you just start going to church? What, what was it? He goes, well, I, I like to eat at this place called Buffalo Wild Wings. And at this point, I had no idea where the story was going. And he said, I like to eat at this place called Buffalo Wild Wings. I have this waitress who's my favorite. And every time I go, she, she waits on me, and we talk about life and whatever else, and and I've been going there for years, and she's been working there for years, and every once in a while, she invites me to come to church. And I always thought that the church was for religious -y people, and it wasn't for me, and, and so I never took her seriously, but she was persistent, but she was friendly, and she, every time I was in there getting a drink or eating some wings, she would... She would tell me about what she's doing at church and how she sings at church on Sundays. And he, he goes, this past Christmas, she invited me to come to their Christmas concert. And I went. And I was just surprised at how friendly people were, how welcoming they were. So I kept coming, and I started to learn about the good news of Jesus and Meanwhile, we're getting close to the hospital. I'm getting ready to get out. And, and I just praised God as we finished up that ride and heard his story of finding Jesus in Buffalo Wild Wings. <laughs> but what struck me about his story was that it was a waitress just serving drinks, serving wings, building a relationship with, with someone as she was just going through life. And she was fulfilling the mission of Jesus to go 
Just go throughout your life, the people you encounter, the people God has put into your life, and invite them to come on this amazing journey of finding life in Jesus. The mission of the church is not so much about going somewhere to fulfill the mission. It's about the fulfilling the mission of making disciples wherever you go. And not only that, but it's, it's just an invitation to be a follower of Jesus. And this is what he says as he continues in verse 19. He says, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. Hey, this, is, this, is, this is his summary. This is his, his secondary clauses to, to describe what it means to make disciples. He says, first, baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Baptism is an experiential picture of being welcomed into a relationship with God. And so baptism is this experiential picture that we've been given in the church to symbolize coming into right relationship with Jesus. And so he says the first thing that's part of this, this task, this mission of making disciples is welcoming people into right relationship with Jesus. And so, and so that, is, that is our mission as the church. That is what we believe that, that, that Jesus is still doing in this world. Is that he's still welcoming people back into right relationship with him. And so the mission of the church is, is really helping people find their way back to God. And then he says, teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you. You see, the church isn't just about having people uh, uh, convert to Christianity. It's about having people choose to follow. And there's a big difference there. And, and I would tend to say that revivalism in America has tended to push for people who make a decision for Jesus, but don't necessarily become disciples of Jesus. And if we as the church take on the full mission of God, our mission is not merely to have people decide to follow Jesus. We have to help them follow. Teach them to obey everything I've commanded you. And, 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 and so we see here that the mission of the church cannot go far from the word of God. And so for us as a church here at Union Congregational Church to be faithful to the mission that God has given us, we cannot go far from the word. Because this is where the life of a follower is found. Okay, so Jesus grounds the mission in the authority of Jesus, not in our ability. And the, the mission is focused not on going somewhere to make disciples necessarily, although some are called to go, but it's more so to make disciples as we are going. But not only that, Jesus doesn't just give us this mission and say, all right, peace out, I'm going to go back up into heaven, you guys do your mission. No, this is what he says in verse 20. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. The mission of the church is grounded in the authority of Jesus. Jesus has given you his authority. The authority of the one who came from heaven, who came to earth, who went in the grave and rose from the dead. He has given you that authority. But not only that, but he's promised you his presence. The mission of the church is empowered by the presence of Jesus. So where is Jesus today? He's here. 
He is continuing his work of calling people from every tribe, every tongue, and every nation to be followers of Jesus, not merely fans. And he has invited the church to be part of this work. And he's calling us to live out this mission right here, right now. In the mundane of Monday morning, in the leisure of Sunday afternoon, Jesus has invited us to make disciples. Wherever you go, whoever you meet, Jesus is empowering the church to continue his work in the world today of calling people who follow him whatever the cost. Jesus is still at work in the world today. The mission of the church is grounded in the authority of Jesus empowered by the presence of Jesus and focused on making followers of Jesus. And that's the point of this passage. The mission of the church is grounded in the authority of Jesus, empowered by the presence of Jesus, and it's focused on making followers of Jesus. So whoever you are, you're called by the authority of Jesus. It doesn't matter how well you can explain things or, 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 or how, how long you've been a follower of Jesus. He, he's calling us to make disciples. And he gives you his authority. And wherever you go, you are empowered by the presence of Jesus. He says, surely I am with you always, even to the end of the age. And whatever the cost... Make followers of Jesus. So again, we ask this morning, why church? Quite simply, because this is where Jesus has chosen to continue his work in the world today, using you and me to make disciples, fully devoted followers of Jesus. The mission of the church is grounded in the authority of Jesus, empowered by the presence of Jesus, and focused on making followers of Jesus. And this is God's vision for his people. This is why church. And this is where Jesus is today.